Well, good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be playing La Salle Second Edition as part of my run through of Napoleonic Horse and Musket rule sets. What you can see in front of you here is a setup from One Hour War Games, a scenario called Take the High Ground, where we have the Americans defending a pretty big hill in the middle of the board. And the objective is for the British over there, represented in green, to uh, come and take the exclusive occupation of that hill by the end of the game. Now, I'm actually using the Order of Battle from Bladensburg, which was the subject of the previous game that I played, uh, where we have a lot of Americans who have unfortunately uh, suffered through some morale and hastily arranged defence um, against the, the British, who are fairly decisive in this particular engagement. So uh, we'll run through the armies, and then we'll get going with the game. As the first line of American defence, we have some militia and some artillery. So this is the Annapolis militia, the Baltimore City Regiment, the Virginia Militia, and uh, the Washington Artillery. In reserve and entering on the first turn, we will have three brigades here. We have the Maryland Militia, Columbia Militia, and Baltimore Militia. These form one infantry brigade. Over here, we have the US Marines, some sailors, and the first regulars under Scott, and they'll enter as a second brigade with their artillery up here. And then the third brigade is a light cavalry brigade under Laval, so that's the Virginia Dragoons and Laval's Dragoons. Now, all of these will be entering on this table edge, and they all need to support this line of defence we have in the background as soon as humanly possible, because the British are coming. The British, represented by these green figures, will be a regiment of colonial marines, a combined regiment of light foot, and the 85th Buckinghamshire foot, and they're supported by a rocket troop. Now, historically, these were the only troops deployed in the Battle of Bladensburg, but because we aren't going to simulate the catastrophic drop in morale of the Americans during the battle, um, if I were to just play with these, they would get absolutely obliterated by the four brigades of Americans. So, Battle of Bladensburg, there were a number of regiments held in reserve, and those are, those are these units here. So we have some sailors, uh, the 44th Foot, the 4th King's Own, some Royal Marines, some sailors, and the Royal Fusiliers, and some Royal Artillery. Now, these units weren't deployed in real life, but we'll have, bring them on as reserves uh, as part of the game mechan mechanics for La Salle. So now we've seen both armies. Let's get down to business. Now, I want to quickly show you this reference sheet that I'll be using through the course of the game. Um, La Salle is a game that does not repeat existing tropes. Everything you play is, is common, kind of unique to these rules. And actually, the moving and shooting of units is only a very small part of the game that you play. You have a momentum phase, which is where you generate the ability to give your units and forces orders. You have a skirmish phase, skirmish phase, where you determine who goes first on each turn. You have an intervention phase, where your commanders can, uh, or your aide de camps, can influence uh, formation changes and dice rolls and so on. Um, you then have an orders phase, where you give those orders. Um, but that orders phase is not I go, you go. You know, I don't move this entire army and then move this entire army. In fact, you you. You give orders to troops, and then in certain circumstances, your opponent can interrupt the fact that you're the active player and take the initiative, and then they start spending their momentum uh, until there's something happens when the other side can interrupt, and it goes back and forth like that until both sides are out of momentum. The first thing that we do in each turn of La Salle is we work out how much momentum each army has. Now, that's calculated as one per brigade on the table, plus two for your baggage, assuming it's not been captured, plus D3 for your general. Now, you can elect to not generate momentum from your general and hold him in reserve, which will allow him to change formations of any units within four base widths. Uh, if you're in, for example, you're about to be attacked by cavalry or you want to change formation to move quickly, and that happens after this phase. Uh, I don't think we're going to be doing that in this game very much. So as a rule, I'm going to be using my generals as D3 intervention. So uh, the British have the same. They have their baggage and they have one brigade on the table. So it's going to be uh, two, three plus D3 for both. So the Americans will get six, let's put that there, on the American side, and the British will get four. Having determined the momentum for our troops by default, we now move on to the skirmish phase. And in doing so, if I zoom you in to a stat sheet, you can see there's this figure here, one, one, two, two, and so on. Those are the skirmish values of each unit. So we tot up the skirmish value of each unit, and then we roll the dice, and for any sixes, that counts as a success. So if I quickly count up the Americans, one, two. The British had a higher skirmish value, so they can go first, and we can choose for the Americans to go first. The first order of business for the British player is to get his brigade actually on the table. This is a representative of somewhere, just back a little. 
that movement complete, the next order I'm going to give is change formation. Okay, the British player now has two momentum remaining. The British player is going to voluntarily cede the initiative to the American player. With six momentum, the American general is in a great position to force the British to react. So I think the first order he's going to give is to change formation, which is going to bring these units into line. Having changed formation, I don't think the American general wants to advance any further. The main challenge is going to be holding out with these troops while we have a bunch in reserve coming up behind. I think the uh, next option is probably for this artillery to fire over there at the uh, bucking foot. Because this is a bombard action, there is no ability to interrupt, so we're fairly safe there. So if we look over here, we need we have four dice, needing fives. So we've got one hit. So to convert that hit into disruption, we need to roll a five, which we don't. Having bombarded the British, the American general is going to pass the initiative back uh, because there is no further change in formation. They don't want to move forward. They, uh, they're not in range of firing. So let's see what the British are going to do. Well, the British don't have any options either, really, because they have moved with these units, they've changed formation. The only other orders are to volley, fire, which they're not in range for, or to rally. So actually, that's the end of the first turn. Let's roll to see if the British 2nd Brigade arrive. They will need a 5. They do. And let's see if the British 3rd Brigade arrive. They will need a 5 as well. They do. So all the British troops are now on the table. The Americans are now going to be pouring in to reinforce their lines. Uh, they're all going to be coming in in column formation, which will give them 10 inches of movement. There we have our... American reinforcements. We have both sets of militia, we have the dragoons, we have some sailors in there, and they're going to be charging up the eastern flank of the board to uh, try and stop the British. Right, now we're going to roll for momentum for turn two, and now we've got a lot more brigades on the board. The, the British have got their brigade that's going to be moving onto the board this turn, and the Americans have theirs. So the Americans actually now have an extra three, so they have six momentum plus D3, and the British will have five momentum plus D3. Higher number gets to seize the initiative. <laughs> and again, that was a one. So the British are going to seize the initiative for turn two. I think the first order is going to be a change of formation to these units over here. So one thing I didn't mention is the move from off board to on board does need to be paid forward orders. So that was two momentum, one for each brigade, which all moved up as a unit. So we went down from eight to six, and then the subsequent piece of momentum was to change these into line formation, that's five. So the next order will be to order the first brigade forward. Now that's gonna bring it into near distance to the enemy, uh, which is going to be able to allow the Americans to seize the initiative. So I'll move it forward. Right, that's the British movement done. Now, very adroitly, the American player is going to choose to interrupt, and they are going to order volley fire. Right, these militia are going to be firing in at the light brigade. Um, they would get 10 dice if they were a normal line unit, but because they are counted as militia, they only get one dice per base. So they'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dice, and they will need fours to hit. Wow, all hits. And they will need fives to convert those hits into disruption. So that's one disruption. So we have one disruption on the light. The next set of fire will be this artillery and this unit of militia here, and they'll be firing at the 85th. So the artillery will get four dice per base, so eight dice total, needing fives to hit. And then we'll need fives to convert that hit to a disruption, which they do. The militia over here will get four dice, needing fours to hit. And I admit. Right, the British having had that volley fire inflicted upon them, they are going to return in kind with an interruption. So we'll have the first brigade firing back over here. Whereas the militia only get one dice per base, the British with linear doctrine get two dice per base. One, two, three, four, five. And they will need threes to convert that to disruption. Okay, that's four. The Buckinghamshire foot will fire at the Baltimore City Regiment over here, but exactly the same dice, eight dice needing fours. One, two, three, four. So that's four dice needing threes to convert to disruption. That's two disruption. 
Okay, that was some pretty devastating fire there from the British. These two units are now going to be severely shaken. Now we're going to have the Americans seize the initiative again. I think as the American player, we're going to, the American general, we're going to bring our reserves in as soon as possible. So moving all three brigades cost three momentum to uh, the American general window. Um, and I think the next move is going to be to get the B group of militia formed up in line in preparation for receiving the British advance. Having done that, I think the American general is going to choose to pass to the British uh, because we can't move any, any closer with our troops and we're not in volley range. So let's let the British come to us. All right, the British player has changed formation with the third brigade over here, which has been to form a square with two units, form a mass with another, and to rotate the artillery battery and unlimber it. That would have cost one, so the British player has one momentum left, and they're going to use that to bombard with the Royal Artillery across the line of the militia. Now, bombardment in La Salle is essentially a base width wide per base, um, and 24 base widths long. So we need to look at all of the units that are within, an, within a straight line from here, and actually it's gonna be these three. So they are gonna receive uh, hits on each. The first will roll, will be rolling three dice, and we'll need fours to hit this Virginia militia unit. One hit, and then threes to convert to disruption. One disruption. Now we have a bounce through where the cannonballs are bouncing through the lines. So we'll, we'll have three dice, but we need sixes now to hit the Washington artillery. Nothing. And then we'll also need sixes to hit the Baltimore City Regiment. One six, and then we need a three to convert that to disruption, which we don't. The American player now has the momentum by virtue of the fact the British player has exhausted his completely. They are going to use that momentum initially to try and rally off some of the damage on these units. So that's done by rolling a number of dice equal to the temporary disruption you have on the units, in this case, four. And for every four up, we remove, and for every less than four, the damage becomes permanent. So we have three permanent disruption on this Annapolis militia. Now let's look at the Baltimore City Regiment. That currently has two disruption. So we'll check that, we need fours. One permanent and one removed. That leaves two momentum with the American general, uh, but there aren't any moves it can do. So it's actually off to turn three. We have D3 plus six on this side. Uh, one, two, three, yeah. D3 plus six for the British, D3 plus seven for the Americans. We're gonna roll off now to see who seizes the initiative. It is the British once again. So I think the British are going to seek to consolidate their position here, and they're going to volley fire again. So there will be eight dice for the first brigade here, plus one for the colonial marines. So that's going to be nine dice total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven dice needing threes to convert. One, two, three, four. And there was only two disruption left. So the Annapolis militia are completely routed and have left the game. The first, the 85th Buckinghamshire first of the first brigade are going to fire at the Baltimore City Regiment. So they will get eight dice. We've got two, and of those two, they will convert both of them. That's now meant that the American player can choose to intervene, and they will absolutely do so. And they will move their units around the back here. So let's get some movement for the American general. Right, that's the American movement done. You'll notice that the Dragoons here have moved through the woods, much like the um, Colonial Marines in the rear over there. The woods just simply had a complication, which means your movement costs an extra momentum. We've swept around, and we're basically reinforcing the full line here. The British have gone heavy on this flank, but we're going to try and deny that, because ultimately the goal is to defend the hill. This manoeuvre has cost us four out of our nine momentum, so we're down to five, but we haven't yet triggered an interruption by the British player. And we're going to have these two militia units and this artillery unit firing canister. We're going to fire at the, uh, the light infantry regiment over here. All right, it's going to be seven dice for the militia. We're going to roll this one first because it's shaken. So as a result, it will need fives to hit. It's one hit. Then we'll roll this one, needing fours. So we get three hits total, we need fives to convert those into shot. 
into disruption, sorry. And we get to two. Now the artillery will be firing canister and it will be rolling eight dice. Needing fives, eight, four, and then needing fives to convert the disruption. We get to three, and that is enough to wipe the 85th of Buckinghamshire foot out of the game. Right, now that volley fire is complete, that permits the British to interrupt in their turn. They are going to move now with the uh, that light brigade over here, the light infantry, into combat. Now, when you're within four inches of a unit, all you can do is move, pivot, and then move straight ahead towards an enemy unit. And then you shuffle around a bit to, to make it all work. Right, we've completed all the movement, and now we fight the combat. Right, in order to fight combat, we look at the unit strength here, it's five, and the Americans is currently one due to the musket fire they've taken. And we roll a dice, and we add those numbers together. So the Americans will get a total of three, and the British will get a total of seven. Because they've been outscored by three or more, the unit is completely broken. Ah! Uh, the American player is going to pass for now. With the destruction of the Baltimore City Regiment over there, we have the initiative passed over to the American general who is going to use the Baltimore militia to try and form some kind of response. That's going to involve firing with the militia at the king's own foot over here. Then we get four dice, needing fours to hit. We get three hits and then they will need fives to convert. They don't get any. Right, having done no damage to the British, it has unfortunately allowed the British to seize the initiative and they will now fire back with their 2nd Regiment, 2nd Brigade, sorry. Um, these two units will fire at the Baltimore Militia. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 dice, 4s to hit. There are 4 hits. And then 3s to convert. 3 damage taken. Now we will fire with the East Essex Foot at the Virginia Militia over there. They will get 8 dice. 1, 2, 3, 4 hits. Needing threes to convert. That's four conversions. I think the Americans are going to choose to rally. They are going to attempt to rally the Virginia militia over here. So they'll need four dice. They'll need four. So three become permanent and one is rallied away. Because that rally was within four inches or four base widths of the enemy, that is interruptible. Now the British, much like they did over here, will use this opportunity now to charge up into close combat. So the Americans will get d6 plus 2, and the British will get d6 plus 6. So the Americans get 5, the British get 10, that wipes out this unit here. Ah! This uh, group of uh, American militia, the Columbia militia, will fire with four dice needing fours. Two hits and fives to convert. One conversion. Volley fire from the Americans gives the British another chance to manoeuvre. Didn't do this last time when I moved this unit up to fight this militia here. I really should have used these two to move up, but nevertheless, I'll do it now. Now that means we have to pick one of these units to be the primary attacker. Well, they've both got a strength of six, so it doesn't matter. So we get six, and we get plus one for the other unit, so we get seven. So the British will get d6 plus seven, the Americans will get d6 plus two. So the Americans get eight, the British get 12. That's enough to beat the, uh, the American unit. Um, but because this result was odd, the King's Own Foot will gain a disruption. For that combat so they took some damage themselves um, in, and some exhaustion in fighting that combat that then also now allows the americans to interrupt again i think there's going to be a change formation order over here just for the sake of using up some more momentum right the uh, last american order was to change formation for the the b group over here, the first brigade group over here which gives them the unlimbering of the guns and these two groups in mass which reduces their overall movement speed but will allow them to bring a little bit more fire to bear as the British uh, colonial marines move forward. This unit now, with the very fast, very last order of the game, will now bombard the colonial marines. It has four dice needing fours. One hit, and then it will need fives to convert. And it does. 
So that's the end of, I think, turn three. I'm going to take a short break now, and I'll bring you back in turn four. I think the order that the British are going to take is a move order, and they are going to order the second brigade forward. The British have moved, and now we have the first combat between artillery and infantry. Obviously, the artillery is no position particularly to defend against a regiment of foot, so they are going to elect to retire. So we roll one dice blue for the artillery, one dice green for the infantry. Whoever gets higher uh, is successful in their pursuit or evasion. So the Americans were successful in evading the British. Now the Americans are able to seize the initiative through the uh, movement close to this unit of Columbia militia here. The Americans are going to elect to change formation, which will apply to their whole army. That has now ensured that the Americans are in a great position to return volley fire. Um, unfortunately, to any retrospect, it is obvious that this unit reforming brought it within four inches of the king's own foot, and as such, the British now are able to seize the initiative again. Right, the British will order their third brigade forward. This won't permit an interruption because we're going to end up further than four inches away from the enemy. Okay, the British will have a volley order. This is actually only going to affect these two units over here, the King's Own Foot and the East Essex. It'll be one dice each for the front two bases here, and then it will be two dice for these two bases here. The rest of them have no line of sight to anything in this unit over here. That's four dice total, needing fours to hit. That's one hit, needing threes to convert. That's now allowed the American general to intervene. The first thing he's going to do is execute a bombard order with this artillery against the Colonial Marines. So it's four dice, needing fours. One hit, and then fives to convert it. And it doesn't do anything. And the move order is going to be for the 1st Battalion, which are these two units back here. Having moved the 1st Brigade closer to the British lines, that's allowed the British General to interrupt, and he is going to retaliate with volley fire on these, with these two units. The Colonial Marines will be firing at the 1st Regiment, uh, the 1st Brigade, and that will need 8 dice, needing 4s. That's 5 hits, needing 3s to convert. No, needing 4s to convert, because these are regulars. Well, that would have been a fantastic roll if that was militia, but as it stands, only one of those got converted to a, per a temporary disruption. Now, the light brigade over here will be firing at the Maryland militia. We actually found that this, these units are within, uh, within range. So that's eight dice, needing fours. That's four hits, and then needing three to convert. That's two conversions. The Americans now will obviously be able to return in kind, and they will execute a volley order of their own. This will be the 1st Regiment here, firing at the Colonial Marines. Four dice needing fours. And that's two hits, and two dice needing fives. That's one conversion. The Maryland Militia. There is unfortunately only one base in range. will fire, needing fours, and misses. Now, the Columbia Militia will fire at the King's Own Foot with four dice needing fours. Two hits, five to convert, no conversions. US Sailors will have two bases that are able to shoot at the King's Own Foot, so needing fours. One hit, needing fives to convert. It does. I think the British are going to elect to move with their first brigade, which will bring them into close combat with the, 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 light, the light infantry against the Maryland militia over there. Now it'll be D6 plus 3 for the Americans, D6 plus 5 for the British. The Americans total 4, the British total 8, which is more than 3 difference, which is enough to remove the Maryland militia from play. It's now time for the Dragoons to shine on the American side, and they are going to move within range of both of these brigades over here in order that they will be able to charge next turn. That does permit the British to react, and they will react with musket fire. The 2nd Regiment of Royal Fusiliers will have eight dice, needing fours. That's four hits, needing threes to convert. 
three conversions. Over here, the sailors will be able to fire, but there's only three bases, so they'll have six dice needing fours. That's four hits, needing fours to convert. Needing threes to convert. Needing threes to convert. That's two conversions. The British, however, have made a classic mistake here. In my eagerness to attack the Dragoons, they did not form square. And as a result, the Dragoons are going to be able to charge and decimate this wing of the battlefield. The Americans, unfortunately, are not within four inches of each other, so I can't give an order to both units at the same time. I think the most prudent thing to do is to give an order to Laval's Dragoons and look to turn the, the wing of the army. So that's exactly, that's exactly what they're going to do. Because the Royal Fusiliers are in line rather than square, that's considered poor formation against cavalry. So as a result, even though the Royal Fusiliers have a strength of six and the, the Dragoons only a strength of two, it's even dice rolling here. The British won by one, which means they gain a disruption, and so do the Dragoons. With that failed cavalry charge, which could very much have turned the British line, the British general sighs with relief and orders the sailors to volley fire into the Dragoons. There's only two bases that are able to fire, so that's four dice, needing fours. Two sixes and needing threes to convert. Double one. Americans are now able to interrupt, and I think they will try a similar gambit over here against the sailors of the 2nd Brigade. That will bring them into close combat here, so it will be even dice rolls. The British managed to beat the sailors, so the British sailors managed to beat the Dragoons by three, which is enough to wipe them from the game. I think it's going to be incredibly difficult for the Americans to capture this hill. They have lost two full brigades, and the British have lost only one unit. Um, really, the upset of the Dragoons on this side, um, despite the bad positioning of the British, uh, has really kind of sealed the game for the Americans. So I think LaSalle does a fantastic job in simulating the ebb and flow of a Napoleonic battle with certain things such as artillery, uh, being able to um, just de dish out death and punishment from a distance without changing things. Whereas when you get into the individuals with the melee and how that um, allows different sides to pull and push what's going on, I think that's really effective. Um, but it is a lot to manage. You'll, you'll notice that um, we had units that had moved but then hadn't fired, and then they weren't activated again until much, much later, you know, seven or eight activations later. And I have to try and remember, okay, that unit has moved, and it, was, it had moved this turn, not the end of last turn, for example. And also you'll notice I have all these bits of paper knocking around, and these are showing me the unit stats. So I'm gonna try and show you here. So that's showing me the 2nd Battalion of Royal Marines, 3rd Brigade, that's a skirmish value, that's the fact it's linear doctrine, that makes it resilient and able to rally off um, disruption more easily. Um, but you'll notice these markers here, and every time you take damage, you have to roll to hit, then roll to convert that to disruption, then mark it as temporary disruption on here, and then when you rally, you then erase them or you mark them as permanent. And I think that's just a lot more steps than is, than is really required for a game with this level of abstraction. I certainly don't think um, it justifies the extra bookkeeping. And it's nice to have these around and have the, the, the statistics there and so on, um, but you don't need to have all this extra bookkeeping. If you didn't have these bits of paper, you'd need to track whether a unit had moved, had shot, had rallied, or had changed formation every turn. Plus, you'll need to track whether they're shaken or fresh. Plus, you need to track how much temporary disruption they have and how much permanent disruption they have. And there's just a lot going on, and I don't think it justifies it. Realistically, I think one-hour war games, despite being a much simpler game on the surface, yields a very similar result, um, but in about a quarter of the time and without all of this bookkeeping. So I think LaSalle is certainly a thumbs middle for me because it's a great game. I just don't like it that much.